Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. See, when we have faith in Christ, we have a faith that saves in Acts chapter 16, verse 31. It says, They said and believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. We have a faith that grows in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We ought to always to give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is only fitting, because your faith is increasing abundantly, and the love of each and every one of you towards one another grows greater, grows even greater. We have a faith that overcomes in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. For whoever has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. He who is one who overcomes the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We have a faith that secures in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, in whom we have boldness and confidence access through faith in Him. We have a faith that commits in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, for this reason... I also suffered these things, but I am not ashamed. For I know I, whom I believed, and I am convinced that He is able to protect what I have entrusted to Him until that day. We have a faith that walks by, uh, not by sight. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We have a faith that works. In James chapter 2, verse 17, In the same way, faith also if it has no works, is dead by itself. We have a faith that stands the, the, the test, which we'll get into as we hit the second half of 1 Peter 7. But we also have a faith that, that keeps faith. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Faith is a living life. It's not a dead corpse. Faith is active. It's not passive. It's not, it's, uh, faith is aggressive. It's not dead. Faith is classed along with love and hope in these three graces which abide. This is the faith that we are to have. But it's not a dead faith. It's not a dead faith. You serve, that's why, what was the thing He told you? You have a living hope. Jesus was resurrected. You have a living hope. You serve a living God. Muhammad, dead. Joseph Smith, dead. Not one prophecy fulfilled in the Mormon book. Neither with, with, with Muhammad in the, in the Quran. We serve a living God. And our, our faith should be tested. And that's our last point. The results of the test as we see the proof of your faith. And I love this. I, I mean, it just, I think sometimes we put our, our, our faith in too many things of this world. But he says, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which pre uh, perishes through the tested by faith, might, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You have to remember the streets of heaven are paved with gold. They don't mean anything there. He's like he's telling you that stuff perishes. Everything that you have a hold of today will be burnt up. 
Because there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Let that sink in for a little while. We, we cling to things of this world. We have to be very careful of that. It's not to say that you're not allowed to have stuff. But the stuff shouldn't have you. Okay? The stuff shouldn't have you. And so when he says like all that stuff, it's, it's like you're being more precious than gold which perishes. It's gone. But that word tested, I love this word. It means to be proved or, or to be approved. It's a, to try metals by fire. So what, what happens with your faith? You go through the fire. And God removes all the impurities every time. You, and He knows exactly how high you can take, how much heat you can take, how much you can... All right, that's enough. And the reflection after all the impurities are removed should be Jesus Christ, not you. If He's still seeing you, then guess what? Back into the fire you go. Because He's got stuff He still needs to work on. It's all part of the maturing process that we go through. Uh, it also involves testing, but determining, and I love this, it's the, another, uh, when we look at definitions of the word, again, we use the Strong's Concordance. So when you see these words up here, and sometimes you'll see the number, I took the number off, but sometimes you'll have the number, that's the Strong's Concordance. We don't use the Webster Dictionary when you, when you study the Bible. You use the Strong's Concordance to find out what the word means. And so when you see in the Greek that on there, I love that it says that it, it is the determining the genuineness or value of an object. So when you're tested, your faith will be revealed. And guess what? Sometimes young believers, they get tested a lot. And they, they fail a lot. Okay? Grace, point them back towards the cross and get them back up and get them back moving again. It's okay. If you've done something that goes against God's Word, just repent and turn back to God. Right? But they're going to say stuff like a new believer is going to say something like, and you go, oh, where'd that come from? That's the old person. And you just say, hey, you, you can't talk like that. You, that's, that should be something that you shouldn't say anymore. It happens. But you shouldn't crucify. Like, oh man, we're going to get the cross. We've got to crucify this dude. That's what the church does. It, the church is known for killing its wounded. Like when they, somebody falls or something, what do they do? They, they want to kill the wounded. But if we understand that you're going through testing, sometimes, guess what? You don't pass every test. Now, I, if there's somebody in this room that passed every test through, through kindergarten on to, to wherever you went to college, God bless you. We have all failed a test before. All of us. That's why you live in the age of grace. But the age of grace is not to be taken advantage of. The age of grace should be you repenting. Right? Should be you repenting and seeking God. But please understand, like if you're, if you're with somebody, even somebody who's mature in Christ can stumble. Everybody's feet are made of clay, including your pastor's. All right, including those guys you see on TV or you listen to on TV, they're all made of clay. They can say, look, they get home sometimes and they say something they shouldn't say. They need to be corrected. They fail the test. God needs to work on that stuff. Psalm 66.10 says, For you have put us to the test, God. You have refined us as silver is refined. In Job 13, 15, I love this. He says, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Nevertheless, I will argue my ways before him. Now, that's a bold thing for Job to, Job to do. But Job is saying, Hey, look, the only one who can test my faith is God. Men cannot do that. God does. And so when he says later on in Job 23, 10, But he knows the way I take. 
when He puts me to the test, I will come out as gold. That's, that's where Job's heart was. And, and, and every time that gold, it, it, it just goes back through the fire again and they remove, remove the impurities. So if you ever watch those shows that are on TV and they're hunting for gold in all these places, the gold is dirty. They have to put it through the fire. They have to get rid of all the impurities. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, it says, The world is passing away and also its lust, but the one who does the will of God continues to live forever. My faith is to do the will of God. That was Job's faith. And I understand that my faith will be tested. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12-15, through 15, it says, Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become evident for the day will show it because it will be revealed with the fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work. We're not saved by works. We're saved by faith through grace. And if anyone's work which has been built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet only so as through the fire. So what he's talking about here is he's saying, hey, look, the things you do as a believer, as a follower of Christ, those things will be tested in the Bema Seat of Judgment. Now, the Bema Seat of Judgment is you're covered by the blood of Christ, so you're not being judged for your sin. But you're, you're being judged for the way that you served the church. And the way that you've done things for the Lord, there may be reward. But if you've taken all your glory here on earth, guess what? You're in heaven. <laughs> you ain't getting no crown. That's why it's going to be tested. It's going to be put on the fire. That's why he's telling you don't focus so much on the things of this world. Focus on the things that are eternal that have more value. You have more time with eternity than you have on this earth. And the things that we do impact eternity. Uh, when we think about this and we think about our faith being tested, I, I was reading a story that, um, about the Titanic. I remember all of us probably saw the movie with Leo DiCaprio. Do you, can you believe that's been almost 30 years ago? Where did time go, right? As, as he was kicked off the, like she pushed him away and he froze and, you know, like, she lived, but he died, right? He froze. But do you realize during that, during that, that actual, you know, as you saw them trying to put the women and children onto the boats, there were actually men who went back in and grabbed dresses and dressed up like women to get on those boats. And then you had John Harper, because when you read, the, so the, pro, the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which perishes through tested by fire, they failed the test, right? But look at, at, when you look at John Harper's life, it says it may be found the, the result to praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. John Harper was on his way to go become the pastor of D.L. Moody's church in, uh, the Moody Church in Chicago. He was a widow. He had his daughter. Now he could have got on the boat with his daughter. He put his daughter on the boat and John Harper went and shared the gospel with as many people as he could share. To the point he gave up his life preserver and told the guy, you're going to need this more than I do. Which faith do you think tested positive? The one where they went and tried to, uh, man, well, I, 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 this trial is too much for me. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, there's an escape route here. I'm going to jump in this escape route. Or the one that John Harper had. And what did, what did it do that John Harper did? He brought praise and glory and honor to Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. It is, you know, one of those things that, that, that a faith to be put to the test, it shouldn't fail. But, you know, it, 
it, a faith that, that cannot be tested can't be trusted. You know, I hate that my brother and sister are going through what they're going through with their dad on their deathbed. But they're going to come out of that trial hopefully praising and glorifying God. That's the hope. It's, it's a reminder for us is that, you know, when we, we think about that, it's, it's the testing should be maturing you to, to grow through the suffering. And I love the way that James puts it at James chapter 1, verse 12. He says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he was approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So we have a faith that results with praise, glory, and honor. We, we have a faith that we don't walk by sight, right? We walk by faith. We have Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now a faith is the certainty of things hoped for and proof of things not yet seen. And we know that those things will be placed on the fire. But will you get the crown? In Revelation 4.10 it says, The twenty-four elders will fall down before Him who sits on the throne and they will worship Him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne. At the revelation of Jesus Christ, will you have anything to cast down? And I love that Peter refers to that. that. That word revelation in the Greek just means taking the lid off. Something that was concealed is now being shown. This is returning. That's why when we see Revelation 1, verses 1 and 2, that's the revelation of, of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave Him to show to His bondservants the things which must soon take place. And He sent and communicated it by His, by his angel to the bondservant John who testified to the Word of God, to the testimony of Jesus Christ, everything that He saw. He's like, these things are going to take place. And Paul even talked about it in 2 Timothy verses 4-8, through In the future there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only to me, but also to all who loved His appearing. It's like Christ appearing, to live in obedience, to follow His will, to do the things that He called us to do. Will you receive the crown? In Psalm 30, verses 5, it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. In Revelation 21, verses 3 through 4, and we'll end here. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among the people. He will dwell among them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself will be among them. And He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. When we think about that for a second, there's no need for any more physicians. There's no more illness. There's no more cancer. There's no more death. There's no more wars. There's no more sin. So could you rejoice in that? I think anybody who's ever, and, and I thought about this with my wife when her father passed away. And anybody, and anybody passed away when they take their last breath. Sometimes they cry. 
that's the last tear they will ever cry in their life. In eternity, they'll never cry again. Isn't that something to rejoice in? Right? Do you understand when you go through the trial, when you go through the stress, are you growing or are you grumbling? Do you have the proper perspective? Am I focused on the... Am I focused on the, the, the fact that I'm born again, that no one can snatch me out of His hands? Am I focused on that, like, man, I have a crown of righteousness. I, I, have, I am going to be with Jesus. He's preparing a room for me. Am I focused on being greatly rejoiced because I have eternity with Him? What are, you, what are you clinging to when you're going through trials and suffering and distress? What are you clinging to? I can tell you my grandparents cling to a bottle. They were alcoholics. My father, same thing. Same thing. They didn't know God. My father just got baptized two weeks ago. Seventy-something years old. It's never too late to know Jesus Christ personally. But you need to have these things. This is why Peter, Peter is telling you, hey, look, y'all are going through, you're refugees, you've lost your homes, you've lost loved ones, you've lost everything financially, but those things aren't as important as what's coming. Proper perspective. Focus on your home, heaven, eternity. If you don't know that, your focus is here on this world, on the world. It ain't going to get any better for you. It's going to get worse. Because hell is not a place that people need to go. And so we need to share the gospel. So I, I, I love this portion of Scripture. I promise we're, we're going to get into more of it next week. So if we left off with verse... Seven, what will we be in next week? Verse 8. We'll be in verse 8. If y'all can, if you want to come hang out with us on Wednesday, we'll be here. We'll be in Genesis 19. We'll be looking at Sodom and Gomorrah. The United States. That's what the United States looks like right now. So, just be ready for that one. Let's go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll close it out here. Thank you all so much. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio. Pretty much wherever you can find a podcast, uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 